gonna be an awesome playoff. <laughs> it's the first time I smiled in a long time outside of my house. The Socceroos are back. Welcome to Socceroos Insider. 560 days since the Socceroos have been in action. Sash Ogonovsky joins me. Sash, great to have you here. Thank you, Zaps. Fantastic to see the boys getting off the plane and uh, making their way to Kuwait. A chartered flight for them after spending a week in the UAE. It's tough uh, to acclimatise in the conditions. Middle of summer over there at the moment. Sash. Yeah, stinking hot over there and uh, they're really going to have to acclimatise as quickly as they can to combat the conditions. Let's have a look at the table as it stands. Of course, four games have already been played in the first phase of qualification. A perfect record, Sash. Four out of four for the Socceroos. And it's even more impressive given the fact that uh, Jordan was a tough opponent and the Socceroos beat Jordan in Jordan in the first stage of the campaign. Yeah, that's always a tough game uh, away from home in Jordan. I've played there, we've lost there. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, always a tough place to go. The, the crowd really gets behind them there and the uh, hostile environment and to get the three points there. The only blemish there is the goals against the one, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll forgive them for that. Yeah, it's a pretty good record to start. Of course, four games coming up in 12 days for the Socceroos. The first game in Kuwait. We'll touch on that a little bit later in the show. But let's have a look at the squad now. And Graham Arnold named 31 players for his squad. Obviously looking at the tough schedule. Uh, a few extra players added. Starting with the goalkeepers, is Matt Ryan the number one? Still is the number one for me, even though Mitch Langerak in this squad maybe gives him a bit more of a challenge. But Matt Ryan's still number one. Let's have a look at the defensive unit now and a few new names are added to the squad. Uh, seven debutants potentially in this squad. We'll talk to Graham Arnold about that soon. But Ruan Tonic, one of the A-League players who's had a fantastic season, it'll be great to see him make his Socceroos debut yeah, in this camp. Yeah, look, it, it's great to see some of the some of the younger players being rewarded for their, for their efforts in the A-League. Shows that you don't need to be overseas to be playing for the Socceroos as long as your form is consistent and, and good. And obviously... Um, a lot of experience there as well with Beach, Deganak, uh, Trent Sainsbury, Ryan McGowan back in as well. So yeah, Frank, plenty of experience Frank there. Frank Karacic, another one we look forward to seeing potentially in action. Uh, he's playing his football in Italy in the Serie B. Let's take a look at the midfield now. And Aidan Hrustic uh, is having a really good year. Jackson Irvine has come off a good season in Scotland. And Kenny Dougal, what about him? What a great story he's been in the last uh, week, especially with Blackpool. Yeah, look, uh, a, a brace to get Blackpool up a division. Uh, uh, you know, bringing that enthusiasm, that that, that confidence, and that and that uh, you know happiness and joy into the camp is always uh, great. And again, experienced players, Jackson Irvine. We know what we know what James Holland could do. Interesting to see how Riley McGree will do as well. Yeah, Colin Metcalf rewarded for his terrific season with Melbourne City as well this season in the A League. Will be great to see him make his Socceroos debut as well. The forwards, Jamie McLaren has been taking the A-League by storm. He'll be a late arrival in the camp and perhaps not feature in the first game tomorrow morning against Kuwait, Sash, but who do you think will start in the front three? Yeah, look, I think uh, Matthew Leckie will play instead of Jamie McLaren, but uh, when players like that don't play, it just gives an opportunity for someone else. You know, we see Chris Economides has been rewarded for his form in the latter end of, of the A-League season. Nikita Rukovica, uh, just coming back from a uh, Israeli championship. So we got guys there that are in good form, playing well for their clubs, hopefully they can translate that in for their country. All right, let's take a look now, before we speak to Graham Arnold, at some of the highlights of the first stage of the qualification camp. Graham Arnold has been good enough to join us live from Kuwait. Thanks for joining us, Arnie. Some great memories, but now the focus is on the next four games, no doubt. How's it going over there? Yeah, great to see you guys, Zappers and Sash. Now, look, it's, uh, we've had a great training camp in Dubai last week. We arrived here yesterday in Q8, and it was uh, a very, very, very good travel across. So everything is great. And as you said, we've, uh, uh, you know, we've got these four games to contend with now. And look, I expect the great performances in that. We've got a lot of energy in the camp. Obviously got an extended squad of 31 players, so <clears throat> it's exciting times ahead. Arnie, having played in that crazy heat, um, how have the boys acclimatised and how are you going to keep on top of it since there's a, obviously a, a lump of games in 12 days? Yeah, that's uh, the purpose, uh, Sash, for the 31-man squad, obviously with a rotation of players. But look, it is what it is, mate. So we, uh, 
we don't mention that that, that word of heat. It's a, we've acclimatised well. You know, it's the same for the the other teams. And you know, there's five other groups in the Middle East at the moment that are playing their World Cup qualifiers in the same way. So for me, it's it's all about uh, you know getting on the pitch. You know, it's been a long time, obviously, but uh, you know when you bring the family back together, it it comes back together quickly. And, and getting the boys on the pitch and enjoying themselves and and obviously representing the nation with pride. Usually with, uh, with the heat comes a slower tempo of football. Uh, how much work or how much emphasis have you done on, on, on the quicker ball movement to, to, to move the ball quicker than what the, actually everybody's moving? Yeah, that's it, Sash. You know, I think our ball speed is the most important thing and patience. You know, we've got to keep the ball. The ball, the ball never gets tired um, and, and, you know, move the ball quickly, move it around the park quickly and then when we break those lines and, and then we need to penetrate well and we've got a, a lot of speed up front. Um, you know, I pick players with uh, great 1v1 actions um, in the final third. So, as I said, it's about uh, the style of play that we play, but obviously with a lot more possession this time. And what about some of the debutants, uh, Arnie? We, we know you've got seven uh, joining you in camp. Can we expect to see the majority of those get a cap? Well, that's uh, the intention, Zappers, because I didn't bring anyone here for no reason, you know, and it's about uh, creating depth in the squad and the, the young ones that I brought in, you know, they'll, they'll probably be part of the Oli Roo campaign. So it's uh, for them to come in and, and be around the older players and, <clears throat> and, you know, the effect that an older player can have on a younger person's career. So it's about bringing them in, getting them used to the environment and... Uh, you know, they'll be fine. I expect uh, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of great talent here. I expect uh, great performances from them. Kenny Dougal's in camp as well. We saw his heroics uh, over the weekend. Uh, he has been in a Socceroos camp before, but what's that done for his confidence? Oh, wow. It's, uh, he will get a standing ovation when he walks into the dinner room, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, so it's, <clears throat> it's great for the kid and it's great that the, the Blackpool got promoted. But, uh, you know... That's the thing, the young kids provide a lot of energy in camp and uh, they provide a lot of energy on the training field and, and you know, getting to, again, everyone getting to know each other better. But uh, look, I, I, at this moment in time, it's, uh, it's an exciting time ahead over these next uh, two weeks and, you know, I can't wait for the games to be played. And take us through some of the challenges uh, around operating in this COVID environment. We see you in a ballroom there, which doubles up as your gym, as your meeting room, as your meal room as well. Yeah, look, I don't know where to start with that, Zappers. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's been a, you know, it's quite tough uh, because at the same time, it's, uh, there's a lot of planning that goes into it. There's more staff required, you know, obviously with the restrictions all different in different parts of the world. So it's... Uh, you know, it hasn't, uh, and it hasn't been easy, but the boys have uh, really dealt with it fantastically well as the staff. And you know, I've feel, I feel myself, even I've gone more from a coach to a manager over the last, you know, you know, last few months getting this right. And, uh, but to look, the most important thing is the football side of things and getting on the field and enjoying what we do. And, and uh, when the boys put the shirt back on and, uh, you know, on, uh, with the training sessions, sorry, in the games, so then obviously the energy will fly. Arnie, really, really happy to see this these, this list of debutants here, mate. We, I think we spoke about this uh, in the past, about blooding players and given the opportunity to get into the camp and, and really get in sync with what the Socceroos are about. And I, I am really happy when I saw this squad. I know we've got a, a couple of players that are out, a couple of senior players but really happy with what we're seeing at the moment, mate. And uh, I, I'm really happy when I see young players getting an opportunity and getting rewarded for their, for their form back home. Yeah, Sash, and look, it's, uh, you know, I, th I think it's something that we've lost focus on over the last 10 years, probably uh, with not qualifying for the Olympics. And that's why I did the Olympic job, because I, I honestly believe, and I think you know very, very, very well, because you were part of it, but... You know, if, if uh, the strength of the Socceroos is a strong Olympic age group team and, and they're, you know, they've got to be the ones that are, you know, tapping the older players on the shoulder and saying, hey, hey, I'm here and, you know, I want your position and, and, and pushing those older players to another level. And uh, at the same time, with the energy that the kids bring in, uh, creates a lot of depth. And as you said, there's a couple of players that are out, but what happens if further down the track, those couple of players out and you haven't tried and tested some younger ones, then you, you're left short. So 
<clears throat> you know, again, for me, it's uh, the strength of the Socceroos is those younger boys. Thanks for joining us, Arnie. We look forward to seeing you out on the touchline. Will it be a T-shirt or a shirt for you? It's hot. Oh, yeah. No, all I'll say is it won't be white. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. All the best. Thanks, guys. Great to hear from Graham Arnold. Time now to have a look at our opponents for tomorrow morning. Kuwait, Sasha Olganovsky, not going to be an easy one against Kuwait. Uh, here's a look at the first time we played them in this qualification round. It was a 3-0 win away to Kuwait in Kuwait City. Matthew Leckie getting a couple and uh, the first two goals, Sash, coming from set pieces. Yeah, look, we're always going to be a threat uh, with our size and, and the delivery um, of Aaron Moy, who unfortunately won't be with us uh, in this uh, section of the qualifying campaign. Um, but look, it's a completely different scenario for us. We haven't played together for 18 months almost. The, the Middle Eastern teams have played some games together, so they're going to have an advantage in that, in that side of things. And we're going to have to quickly land on our feet, gel as a team. I know that, that you know, I think there was 13 players in camp in Dubai, um, so not the total 31 squad. And, Everyone's going to have to pretty much learn on the run and make sure that we're getting results at the same time. Yeah, the set pieces, that I know that they've been working on a lot uh, in the last few days. And Aaron Moore, you mentioned his quality. You see the finish uh, that he takes for his final goal here. You touch on the, his uh, absence. Some of the players that will step up in, uh, in his absence. Oh, look, I think one that really comes to mind uh, is uh, Aidan Hustic. I think he's one that will fill that void uh, of Aaron Moy, we know his delivery is on par with, with Aaron's and, and if he can bring that quality uh, into the team then we won't really miss that <laughs> as much. <laughs> yeah, it was a brilliant finish, uh, one of the best uh, of the campaign we've seen so far uh, from Aaron Moy, a clean striker of the ball and this one left the goalkeeper with no chance whatsoever. We're going to put you on the spot now, Sash. Uh, the starting 11 for our first game of the campaign against Kuwait. You've had some time to think about it. Obviously Arnie's going to have a look at the players who've been in camp for a little bit longer and those early arrivals. Talk us through your predicted starting 11. Yeah look for me there's going to be a bit of tried and, and trusted players there that have been involved with Arnie and, and played some, some games for Arnie and helped with that first round of qualifying. Obviously Matty Ryan in goals for me as his badge left. Trent Sainsbury, Milos Steganak Central defensive pairing, pretty solid there. Ryan Grant, uh, Aiden Hustic for me comes in for, for Aaron Moy with that creativity. Uh, Jackson Irvine next to him. Riley McGree comes in for possibly Tommy Rogic, who's not here with us. Owar Mabil, we know what he can do. Uh, Martin Boyle and Matthew Lecky up top, I think, uh, in uh, with the absence of uh, Jamie McLaren. Yeah, a really experienced 11, and you think that's important uh, given the importance of us getting a strong start to the campaign? Well, we do need to uh, get a strong... It's almost like a group stage at a, at a tournament, so uh, if we can start off on the right foot, probably rest some players if, if the results go our way, then that last game against Jordan is going to be our toughest test, so uh, we'll try and get... Obviously, I think... I don't know what Graham Arnold's thinking, but he's going to try and rest his best 11, because every coach has a best 11, while giving the other players an opportunity to play. But I think to, to start off on the right foot is really important. All right, you touched on Aidan Hrustic. Uh, let's uh, have a look at uh, him in a little bit more detail. He's uh, had a terrific uh, elevation in uh, the Bundesliga, starting to play some regular game time now at Eintracht Frankfurt. Here's Aidan Hrustic when he came on in the first stage of the campaign as a substitute. This was... Uh, against Chinese Taipei in Kaohsiung. I was there that night. It was a terrific uh, evening. Obviously, Australia scoring plenty, but he made a real impact when coming off the bench. Yeah, well, look, you can see his delivery from set pieces, which is going to be crucial uh, in this qualifying. Uh, it's something that Aaron Moy usually does for us. So it's sort of a like for like. For like. Obviously, Aaron Moy, uh, ex-Premier League playing in China now, we know what he can do. It's Aiden Hustic's chance now to step and fill that void uh, while Aaron Moy isn't there and also to create some headaches for Graham Arnold moving forward. And getting that experience uh, in the Bundesliga as well, there aren't a lot of players playing uh, at uh, that level at the moment in this squad. No, and he scored just recently as well, so again one of those players that will be coming back, uh, coming into camp with uh, you know a heap of confidence. All right, uh, thanks for your 11, we'll see if you're right uh, in the morning. Uh, Awa Mobile coming up very soon on the Socceroos Insider.
Another player to watch is Awa Mabil. We love watching him in action. He's been good enough to join us now. Awa, thanks for joining us. Tell us a little bit about your experience so far in the UAE and now in Kuwait. Yeah, it's a pleasure to, to, to be talking with you guys. Um, yeah, and obviously the training has been well uh, the last week. Uh, all the boys have been buzzing to be back and it's been amazing to be together again and yeah, get back to um, what we do best. Hey, well, I've read about your club frustrations this year, uh, game time, etc. Are there any moves on the cards for you to move to somewhere where you're going to play regular football and show us and get back to the form that, that we all know you can produce? Yeah, that's uh, obviously what I'm what we're working on. Um, I have one more year left on my contract in, in Denmark. So, um, yeah, it's a little bit difficult situation for, for both the club and me, uh, but it's getting better for me day by day. So, um, yeah, I look forward to one day uh, making that next step, uh, but that's not where my focus is at. My focus is here now, and I'm really enjoying being here. So we'll focus on that after, after we won all our games here. Awa, hey, you've appeared in all matches so far on the road to Qatar. Four goals in 14. It's been a great ride for you. Do you feel like you're now maturing as uh, one of the established players in the squad? Yeah, I feel really good here. Uh, it's obviously a great environment. Uh, since Arnie came in, it's created an environment where you know, we, can, we can all be ourselves. Um, and that's the most important. So I think my job is to... to to of course work for the team and then when I get the chance I will score my, my goals uh, to help the team win so that's my job but at the same time I'm just enjoying being here and the rest, the rest take care of itself so I'm not worried about that and it's just been a dream so far so I hope to continue this dream. We've uh, spoken about some players that are coming through and expecting to see more game time. Aidan Hrustic is one of them. He's been pretty impressive uh, when we've seen him in little bits and pieces so far in the Socceroos, but uh, his club career is going on in leaps and bounds as well. What do you enjoy about uh, playing alongside him and training alongside him? Yeah, he's one of those players you need on the ball. Um, he's developing very well and, you know, as a player, as a winger, you know, you would love to play against or with players like that. Um, who can find the passes and we've seen that uh, when he came on I think against China uh, he made three assists um, so we're looking forward to seeing more of that and yeah we've been working a lot on on the link up play so I think you guys should expect something uh, <laughs> something very good from from Hayden. Now is it true that you uh, I've got two Adelaide United stars with me uh, here today uh, Awa Mabil and Sasha Ogonovsky. is it true that you were in the terraces cheering this man on when you're a little boy? Yeah, I used to go to Hamas to support them uh, when I was young. And then um, obviously he left and then he was playing in the Socceroos. So it's a, created a good pathway. So yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure to be talking with you guys. And he, was, he was pretty tough, wasn't he? Yeah, he was a tough man. <laughs> <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't like to play against him because, yeah. <laughs> good stuff, Awa. Thanks for joining us. All the best. Thank you very much. Take care. All right, time to find out who is the smartest Socceroo. Is it a current day player? Danny Vukovic on their side this time. Sasa Ogonovsky, the former Socceroo. Gents, are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be, you zaps. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> All right, gents, we're going to get you to write down the answers to your questions and we'll see who gets the most right at the end of our quiz. Number one, how many colours are there in the rainbow? We've got five seconds to answer each. Number two. Oh, you, you tell me that now. <laughs> what is someone who makes shoe horses called? Horseshoes. Shoe horses or, or horseshoes? Horse <laughs> <laughs> well, we know who, 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 the, who the dumbest presenter is. <laughs> I'll blame the person who made this question. <laughs> All oh, right, dear. let's go. Richie Cunningham was a character in which TV sitcom? Richie Cunningham. Can I have a clue? Is that like an American sitcom or an Australian sitcom? American. <laughs> I've got no idea. Um, Turn back the clock a bit, Wooker. Okay. Uh, Richie. All right, next one. Name the Oli Roos three group stage opponents for the Tokyo 2020 Men's Football Tournament. 
I don't know. So who will the Oli Roos play here. in Tokyo? Final question. Which of these stadiums is not a World Cup venue for 2022? Is it A, Al Bayt Stadium? Number, or B, Al Rayan Stadium? C, Al Ani Stadium? Or D, Lusail Stadium? Which of these stadiums is not a World Cup venue? All right, time to reveal your answers. We'll start with Vuka. Uh, I've missed a few. Uh, that Richie Cunningham one, uh, no idea. And uh, sorry to the Oli Roos boys, I could only get one. But uh, I went seven for the rainbow. Correct. A farrier. Correct. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't sure about that. I wasn't, I wasn't even sure if that was a, a real word. But uh, <laughs> And uh, I only got Argentina in the group stages and I went with C. Al Arnie. So that's three out of five for VUCA. Well done, Sasha. <laughs> Everyone knows we're playing Argentina. That's good. <laughs> Same boat. Oh, Except I know yeah. happy days. I grew up watching this. <laughs> I think the fact that Sasha's got a bit of grey hair helps him <laughs> with that question. Happy days was the one you missed, VUCA. So happy our days. winner is okay. Sasha Ogonovsky. Can't buy experience. Congrats, Sash. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, Luca. So, some uh, <laughs> tough questions there, man. Did you get Whilst, the rainbow one? Yeah, I did. You got seven. the rainbow. Whilst we've got you, Vuka, oh, tell okay, us a little right. bit about how everything's going in camp. Of course, uh, we know that you're there with Matty Ryan and we know Mitch Langerak has announced his retirement. A little bit of a different feel amongst the goalkeepers in this camp? Yeah, uh, nothing really changes uh, on our end. We're, we're working hard and it's always great to get back in with everyone, but... Certainly sad to see Mitchy go. Uh, we understand the circumstances and the reasons behind it. I think given his form, he, he'd definitely be here and, and contending to play. But um, yeah, we, we wish him all the best and uh, look forward to watching him do well at club level. Well done. Thanks for joining us and um, get back and study your US sitcom. <laughs> Cheers, fellas. Good to chat to you. Thanks, mate. Well, Sash, you're the quiz master. You've got the ex-Socceroos up 1-0. Uh, well done. You're, before you. we go, a prediction. Uh, can the Socceroos uh, get their campaign off to a firing start? Yeah, look, I think uh, probably the same scoreline as it was here, 3-0 for me. I think uh, even though we've got a couple of boys out, I think the boys that come in have got a point to prove as well, um, and they'll do a good job for us. Great to see you. Thanks for coming in, and uh, we'll do it all again soon. Thank you, Zavis. All right, so plenty more Socceroos Insider coming up for you before each game. We'll continue to bring you uh, a preview, an inside look into the Socceroos camp and what's coming up. Don't forget the game on tomorrow morning. You can catch it live on Fox Sports, on KO, on ABC TV, and on the My Football Live app. From me, Michael Zapponi, and Sasha, thanks for tuning in, and go Socceroos.